good people. It's your boy KC Fowler, one half of the Fowler's podcast, host of the Melon and Warriors podcast, bringing y'all something a little different yet again. I know normally I talk about a specific melanated warrior in a certain time frame, but we're going to do something a little different. We're going to talk about the battle at Bamber Bridge. So let's go ahead and jump into that. So during the Second World War, Bamber Bridge was host to the 1511th Quartermaster Truck Regiment. They were part of the 8th Air Force. Due to segregation still being a thing, this U.S. Army unit was almost entirely melanated besides one officer. The MP or military police, for those of y'all who don't know what uh, MP is, in the area were also white. Units like the, the 1511 were considered dumping grounds, dumping grounds for less competent officers, which resulted in poor leadership across the regiment. Because of the race riots, the people in this British land where Bamber Bridge was supported the men and the troops. After the results of the race riots, you know, the race riots were over. Um, the particular race riot that was going on this time was the riot in Detroit. So this was over with, and the U.S. commanders called for a color bar. So basically what a color bar was, was all melanated soldiers across the army had to, you know, they had they were they were confined to their their barracks, their tents, their where wherever their AO was, their area operation, that's where they had to stay. However, in the same town of Bamber Bridge, three local pubs posted outside of their pubs, black troops only in support of the melanated people in their country. So on the evening of the 24th, June 1943, some of the soldiers from the 1511 were drinking with the English people and ye old they hob in. Corporal Ray A. Windsor and PFC Ralph F. Ridgeway responded to a report of trouble at the local pub. So they get down there and the MPs had orders to arrest anyone who was out of the camp without a proper pass or being disorderly or not in proper uniform. Now, when you're out in public, at these times, you know, military, they had specific uniforms you're supposed to wear when, when you're out in the public and everything like that. And even now, if you don't have authorization to take leave or a pass, they can consider that AWOL. So that part, you know what I'm saying, I get. So when they got to the pub, they encountered Private Eugene Nunn, who was dressed in a field jacket rather than his dress uniform, and they asked him to step outside. So a big argument took place with the local people and a British soldier standing up to the MP saying they haven't done anything, leave them alone. A melanated uh, staff sergeant by the name of William Byrd diffused the situation. And as the MPs were leaving, someone threw a beer at their Jeep. <laughs> After getting reinforcements, the MPs were told by Captain Julius F. Hurst and Lieutenant Gerald C. Windsor to do their duty and arrest the, melanated, the melanin soldiers. MPs intercepted the soldiers on their way to return into base at Mouncy Road. A fault broke, uh, excuse me, a fight broke out, which led to shots being fired. One hit Private William Crossland in the back and killed him instantly. The melanin soldiers, even though injured, returned to their base. So at midnight, several Jeeps full of MPs arrived at the melanin soldiers camp, including an improvised armored car with a machine gun mounted on top. The melanin soldiers began to arm themselves with their rifles, but it was said that around two thirds of their weapons were taken and a large group left the base in pursuit of the MPs after all that cleared up. British police stated that the MPs set up a roadblock and ambushed these soldiers. The melanin soldiers instructed the locals to stay inside as a firefight broke out between them and the MPs, resulting in seven being wounded. The fight stopped around uh, four in the morning. The next morning with an officer, three melanin soldiers and one MP having been shot and two other MPs beaten. Soldiers eventually returned to the base and all but four rifles were found and taken. The end result was 32 melanin soldiers were court-martialed, convicted of mutiny and other related crimes to this incident. Two trials were conducted because of this incident. Four of the men and the soldiers that were involved in the initial fight at the pub were sentenced to hard labor for one to three years. They were all dishonorably discharged. So the second trial involved 35 melanin soldiers. That included seven that were acquitted, 28 that were convicted. And honestly, to me, that was saying, hey, 
we're, 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 we're fair. We're not racist. So we let seven of these guys, you know, get off or whatever and keep doing what they do while we convicted these other 28. But that's neither here nor there. That's just my personal opinion. The ones that were convicted were sentenced to a range of three months to 15 years. Even though all these 15 uh, melanin soldiers that were convicted and sentenced, they eventually returned to service in June 1944 and six others had their sentence reduced, which, you know, to me, it, it just speaks volumes of us as melanin people, even though we were segregated, we were discriminated against, everything like that, we still continued to serve this country of ours. So eventually, General Ira C. Ecker, the commander of the 8th Air Force, put most of the blame on the white officers and the MPs because of the poor leadership and racial slurs by the MPs. So to remedy this, he combined the melanin trucking units into a special command. And basically he purged all the units of their incompetent leaders and the racist, racist officers as well as best they could, I'm sure, because ain't no way to get rid of all of them. But anyway, the MP patrols were racially integrated, which is really cool, you know what I'm saying? Forcing you to work hand in hand alongside somebody you hate for no apparent reason other than the color of their skin. Um, this, this resulted in a rise in morale with the melanin troops stationed in England. The reports of the melanin soldiers standing their ground were heavily censored, with newspapers saying only that violence had occurred in the town northwest of England. And this is why I do the Melanin Warriors podcast right here. Um, it's for us as melanin people as to be known and shared, not just as us as people, but for the entire world to show them our contributions, our, and our resiliency and hopefully hopefully a better understanding of one another. So these melanin soldiers truly exhibited standing for something or falling for anything. So like always, it's your boy Casey Fowler, one half of the Fowler's podcast, host of the Melanin Warriors podcast. Shout out to those, those brave soldiers who served during the time where we had to look out for the enemy we came to fight as well as the enemy that's supposed to be beside us. And I'm glad for my sake, for my kids' sake, and all the melanated soldiers who stand next to me and who have been there before me, that this has changed. So without that, you know, with further ado, y'all like, share, subscribe, check out TikTok at melanin underscore lion. Some new content is going to be start dropping soon from both podcasts, both Five Lakes podcasts and the Melanin Awards podcast. And hey, man, it's your boy. <laughs>